Hi, how's everyone doing? Thank you for joining us uh, this morning, afternoon, evening, depending on what time you're watching this. I'm uh, very excited to do a little feature with um, Vinal Sauce and have a little fun with uh, our special guest today. We'll be diving a little bit into the, um, the Alsace wine region and talking about the, the historic um, property known as uh, Domaine Jean Baptiste Adam. And uh, we'll have our guests coming on shortly, and I look forward to having her and talking to her during this lunch period. Um, so yeah, in the meanwhile, enjoy the tunes, and we'll also have, um, let's, I would like to talk a little bit, I guess, uh, some little trivia, and hopefully uh, teach you a little something about Alsace while we're waiting for our guests to join us. Um, if you're not familiar with Alsace, it's a, it's a region that kind of borders Germany and Switzerland, Switzerland. And it's a pretty, about 10 mile wide strip, about 80 miles long. And um, it's, uh, it's a border on the, in the west, it's protected from the westerly range by the Vosges mountain range, uh, which allows it to be a very kind of a dry uh, wine growing region that gets lots of sunlight. So really kind of perfect conditions get perfectly ripe, but yet structured um, wines. And I do see that Laura has joined us. So let me go ahead and add her in the meanwhile. And we can go from there. Um, the cool thing about this region that a lot of people don't know about is that they actually are, uh, produce uh, some of the most sought after and enjoyed sparkling wines in all of France. Uh, and we'll definitely have Laura get a little bit into that uh, in our conversation. And without further ado, as you can see on your screen, we have Laura Adam, uh, the 15th generation of her family estate. Um, and, you know, I wanted to welcome her for joining us for our very special Lunch with Alsace um, uh, Instagram chat. Uh, this is kind of the second in the series. We started off, uh, if you missed it, please take time to look check out Carolyn Strong, who did the first talk with uh, Olivier Ombrich of uh, Zin Um And um, we're continuing to talk, kind of promote the Millesim Azaz and the Azaz AOC wine region, as well as the digital fair that they have going on. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, I'll be talking with Laura Adam, um, uh, who is the ambassador, uh, rightfully so, of her domain. And um, she is, the, as I mentioned, she is the 15th generation to kind of perpetuate the spirit and um, know-how of the house. Uh, she had studied viticulture and enology. She has a master and MBA in wine, commerce and management. Um, and uh, after she graduated, she took a little bit of time. Uh, she did a little bit of travels, kind of got her experience, fresh experience in Italy and London before coming back in 2012 to work at her domain, uh, bringing everything that she learned. And I'm very excited to talk to you about some of those things. Um, so without further ado, uh, please, a warm welcome to Laura Adam. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, or evening for you, because it is uh, 6 o'clock in your time, correct? Hello, hi. Yes, I'm fine. Uh, here it's the apéro time. It's already 6 the evening, and uh, I'm happy to be with you uh, today and uh, to be able to share some uh, nice wine together. Well, if we were to extend your, 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 your work day by any means, I guess this would be a great way to do it, right? So, yeah. So, um, for those, you know, those folks that are not familiar, I kind of gave a very, very brief introduction to Alsace. Can you kind of, uh, in your own terms, can you give us a few main points about what you feel is important to know about Alsace as a whole? And also, what do you feel is the biggest advantage that Alsatian wines have in the world of wine? Mm -hmm. Good question. Uh just to speak about uh, the Alsace region, we are located in the northeast of France and we are quite a really small vineyard, uh, approximately 15 hectares of uh, 15,000 hectares of vines. Uh, and uh, the location is really important also. We are between the Rhine River and the Vosges mountain on the borders of Germany and Switzerland. And um, we can say that our vineyard, uh, vineyard is, of course, beautiful, unique, due to um, the terroir. We have many terroirs. In Alsace, you can find terroir from all over the world in a small region as us. And also, our exposition uh, and uh, our climate, uh, semi-continental climate as unique. It's unique. And uh, to answer to your question about the, the biggest advantage of Alsace wine, uh, I can say it's not easy because, of course, we have uh, too much advantage. But uh, <laughs> I can say that um, 
Uh, I will say the diversity of our wine is amazing. Uh, we can produce uh, many great variety, mostly uh, white wine, but uh, mm -hmm. we are able to produce uh, dry or sweeter wine, but always with high acidity, high concentration. Uh, our Alsace wine uh, will be always fresh. And uh, that's why I think it's something uh, unique and and there is no um, lots of uh, small region as us able to produce uh, so many kind of different uh, wine. Yeah, you're talking about like, you know, the diversity of terroir. Uh, I believe there's approximately about 13 different distinctive soil types that uh, can be found throughout Alsace. And that differentiation can be from fairly close together, correct? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Actually, each uh, village we will have uh, different kind of terroir, and even if our own domain, sometimes we have one parcel uh, in a grand cru, and uh, you you walk five minutes after it's uh, on the second parcel, it will be a different kind of soil, and this is amazing. Uh, you can find uh, granite uh, or all kind of soil that uh, we have uh, in in the world, as I said. And for those that are paying attention, obviously, you know, your banner says, you know, it shows you where you're coming from, Amherstware. Can you talk really briefly about what, like, what, what you need to know about Amherstware from where you're situated, uh, about I'm, your terroir? Uh, Amherstware, it's a small village. Uh, we are located really in the center of uh, the Alsace region, close to Colmar. And um, we are uh, a famous village for uh, the, the, the wine. Uh, or uh, the village is, uh, we, we are approximately 2,000 uh, habitants. But uh, there is uh, more than uh, 20 different uh, winemakers. Uh, all around our village, there is lots of uh, vines. And uh, the particularity of our village is that um, we, we have lots of granite soil. And this kind of soil uh, will give us a really um, a fresh and, um, and a light kind of wine. And uh, of course, it's uh, a famous village for Riesling and Gewürztraminer in particular. Awesome. So, you know, for, you know this is a lot of information that we, you, we that folks can definitely learn about uh, if they are attending the Mille Seam Alsace. Can you kind of give us kind of a brief uh, introduction to what this is about? Um, this is a, a fair to sing place, a digital fair to sing place, uh, June 7th to June 9th. Um, but I, I'm sure people would like to learn a little bit more about what, what it's about, what they can expect and uh, kind of your role through the entire fair. Yeah, actually, um, before this year, um, since, uh, since year four edition, it was a, a wine show uh, organized by, by the Alsace region, and uh, it was directly uh, organized in our region, of course, in Alsace, and people from all over the world uh, came uh, in our region to uh, discover our wine, and of course, the winemaker directly. But uh, this year, and you know why, because of the situation, uh, the, the fair is uh, reinventing itself. And now it's becoming the first virtual trade tasting. And it's organized by our vineyard, by the Alsace region. And uh, uh, in this virtual tasting, uh, we will be uh, 100 uh, different uh, winemakers, exhibitors. Wow. And um, the trade can attend uh, also uh, some different seminar and you can make some appointments uh, with uh, different, uh, with the winemaker that you like to see. Of course, it would be uh, only for the professional and it would be uh, not in, uh, in reality. But the special things will be that um, all the professional can ask to receive some sample. And uh, if you do uh, the um, re registration, you can um, receive a box with uh, five small bottles of Alsace wine with three centiliters of wine. And um, the, the aim is to be able to, to see the winemaker uh, and also to taste together uh, the wine. And it's something unique and uh, really Alsace, it's... Uh, it, the Alsace region um, is the first to make this kind of, uh, of show. No, when I received the, the package and everything, it's absolutely amazing what you're able to, to put together. And, you know, it's the next best thing, if you will, to, to being there. You know, obviously, we'd love to be there to be able to see you in person, taste your wines, hear your stories, you know, and mm -hmm. just be able to interact with you from a more internet. But this is, I feel, is the next best thing. I think you all are definitely making, uh, as we say in the United States, lemonade out of lemons. 
So uh, commend you for that. And I know it's a lot of work that went into that. Um, can you remind people what uh, booth you are and like uh, how they can make, like, I think you touched it, but just in case you didn't, how do they make an appointment if they want to taste with you after hearing you talk about your wines today? Yeah, actually, my father and me, we will be both two. It's easier because our name, Adam, we, we will be the, the first. Huh? It's uh, both two. And um, actually, you can just go online. Uh, as, yes. <laughs> and you can go online and just ask uh, appointments. And uh, then uh, they come back to you. Uh, we have a special calendar on weekend uh, together. Uh, Six uh, appointments, and uh, then we you will receive uh, the sample directly at home. Even if you are uh, in Canada, in US, in the UK markets, everywhere you are able to receive some sample in all over the world. That's really uh, important to to know. And and then we can uh, yes fix uh, appointments. It's three days, and during these three days, uh, all the day. Um, uh, we will be able uh, to be to to see us. I don't know about you, Laura, but like one of the best things about what you just talked about is that a as a um, a buyer and so on and so forth, you don't have to fight anymore with the crowds. You are not like you know shoving your glass in trying to get someone to pour you wine and so on and so forth. And I'm sure for you too, you know you don't have to worry. You can worry about just talking to the wine, sharing the stories instead of having to like, what wine are you on? What am I pouring? So on and so forth, right? So I think that's, that's a really great format. I think um, everybody would benefit from this particular fair. Um, so let's get into kind of the meat of the, um, the conversation here. Um, so, you know, Alsace is kind of known for wineries that are in the same family for generations. And as we mentioned earlier, you are the 15th generation, which is absolutely phenomenal. And this is no small feat by any means. Can you talk to us a little bit about why that is kind of really noteworthy, uh, especially in a region such as Alsace? Yes, uh, indeed. Actually, uh, I'm I'm the lucky because uh, in my uh, family winery, I'm the 15th generation, and uh, we are one of the oldest family um, in Alsace. And uh, actually, it's important to know that, uh, as I said, we are a really small vineyard, and uh, at the moment, uh, the tradition and the family side is still preserved, and uh, we don't have a huge uh, group or you know bank. Uh, who buy a vineyard in Alsace and I think it's, it's a chance for us because we, we are still able to keep a family as us and um, um, I think it's of course it can, it can be a lot of pressure but also I think it's, it's really a chance for us the new generation to have so so different uh, generation before us uh, I learn uh, every day about uh, what did uh, my ancestor and uh, for example, when I uh, walk in my uh, cellar, when I see all uh, the century wooden cask, I always feel uh, really, uh, you know, uh, yeah. it's something uh, bizarre, but it's something so nice uh, to imagine that before me, uh, three generations before me, uh, some, uh, some um, my ancestors uh, decided to build uh, this uh, kind of um, century wooden cask, for example. And I think uh, that it's a chance of course, I need to keep this tradition, but also in, in the wine today, we also need to, um, to be modern sometimes when, uh, when we need. And uh, every day with my father, we try to combine, you know, these two things, tradition and modernity. For, it's, so you can't, he, he, for us, it's important. Honoring tradition doesn't mean that you keep your eyes closed in, in, in the process of honoring it. Exactly. For example, you know, I don't know if you see, but yes. this is, um, this is uh, our cellar. And uh, as you can see, it's really unique uh, to be able to work with uh, this uh, century wow. with cask. Huh? The age of how big are those casks? One, one thousand, uh, one hundred years minimum. Hundred years old, but uh, how? Also, how large are they? Yeah, it's huge. So, uh, yeah, yeah, but a century, they're a century old, but how? Um, what's the volume? The volume is between one thousand to four thousand liter. Oh wow! Yeah. It's, uh, but it's, it's really a gift from my ancestor, and yeah. for me, uh, it's, it's really important to continue to use it. That's, that's absolutely phenomenal and amazing. Mm -hmm. um, can you also talk, you know, we talked about, like, you know, the importance of the generations and everything. Um, can you also talk about kind of like the evolution of the winery, the things that you've kind of adapted? You said, you know, you want honor traditions and so forth, but also you're keeping your eye on, you know, what, what modern practices, what things you can incorporate into further 
uh, honor those traditions, but also enhance it as a whole. So what are, what are some examples of that that you've seen? Of course, you don't have to go back to to the, the, the very first days in 1614, so on and so forth, but I'd love to hear about, you know, some of those um, innovations, if you will, that you've incorporated over the years and generations. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, the, since 1614, lots have changed, but uh, if, uh, if I think to my grandfather and my father and me, for example, my grandfather in the past uh, was producing a more classical style of Alsace wine, especially also for the local market. Uh, that means that he produced uh, in the past lots of um, blend, you know, uh, local blend, like uh, the name is Edel Swicker. It's why a mm -hmm. it's why yeah. it was a blend uh, of different grapes and for the local restaurants. But uh, when my father arrived, uh, he modernized all the winery. Uh, he kept, of course, the traditional cellar, but uh, he expanded uh, it to create processing storage um, facility for the production of sparkling wine for Tremont d'Alsace. And uh, it, uh, the important thing also is that uh, he decided to, to follow his conviction and uh, to work organic and biodynamic uh, in the vineyard. And already in 2003, we were certified organic for- Were well, you kind uh, of one of the first early on, right? Early adapters of, yes, that, of exactly. those farm practices, right? Yeah, but actually my father was a, a precursor and um, I think also it's a great chance for me and for my husband uh, who work in the vineyard today with me because um, we can uh, recover uh, vines uh, organically cultivated you know, and uh, it's uh, for us. It's it's really uh, something important, and uh, and we 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 are agree with the choice of my father, and of course uh, we want to continue on this way and to be uh, more and more uh, biodynamic uh, as uh, as he made before. And actually, as soon as I arrive uh, in 2012. Um, I uh, also uh, upgraded many things, many different things with my father. For example, uh, I modernized uh, for, uh, the, the label, you know, because I think it's really important, uh, uh, as I said, to be traditional, but also um, that I want to show a more mod a, a modern image of our region. And yeah. also I created a new cuvee, uh, a new sparkling wine, uh, Blanc de Blanc, for example. And I also created a really mm. nice uh, cuvee called uh, Sec C. Sec in French Sexy, means yeah. dry. <laughs> and yeah. um, for me, it's really important to show that the wine from Alsace, uh, most of the time, it's uh, dry wine. And also, I created this cuvee with a really modern packaging. Um, and uh, of course, uh, I, I, I work, I try to, to work more and more on the, on the export market and, and the website for me, since I'm here, uh, the website, I, 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 uh, it's a new one on the social media, so Facebook, Instagram, uh, since I'm, uh, I'm here, uh, we, we have this kind of uh, social media. I think it's really important to each generation uh, need to, to do um, something new and also something that, uh, of course, uh, we like. Yeah, it's obvious that, you know, there's always, there's already the pedigree and the work being done in the vineyard, uh, in the winery and so forth. But the, the X factor, I think, of what you're doing is everything that you just talked about, you know, um, modernizing in terms of putting yourself out there into interwebs and so forth and getting people to, to learn and hear and discover uh, and so forth. And part of that is the social media, part of that is having a, a cohesive and easily navigatable um, uh, website. Uh, and then lastly, you said the, the, the label, you know, the label is important because, you know, when you're on a shelf, a lot of consumers buy based on what something looks like or something that visually appeals to them. And, you know, you can't underestimate, you know, that particular factor because of the fact that that could be uh, a deciding factor. Um, and then obviously what's in the, the, the bottle will be the, the one that gets them to come back and, and, and purchase that bottle again. But uh, in, in the beginning, when they're not familiar, they're not, they don't know, they're not familiar with Cremant d'Alsace, they're not familiar with Alsace, they never had it or something like that, but they want to try it. So it's something that might lure them into it is definitely the label. So I definitely commend you for taking the efforts to um, uh, put the work into to um, elevate as well as um, take the care to think about those type of factors, which you know we appreciate as, you know, as buyers, whether it be in the retail market or uh, as sommeliers. Um, 
So, you know, um, you know, we mentioned Cremont a couple times now. It obviously has a very uh, important part in your family's history, generational. And I also know that you have a particular love for, for bubbles. And uh, so uh, part of this lunch series, we will be tasting, or oh, I will be anyway. I don't know about everyone else that's joining us, but hopefully they will in the near future get a chance to try uh, some of your Cremont. And so what we have uh, is De La Natura uh, Brew. Yes. As well yeah. as the Rosé to be tasting. So if you don't yeah. mind, would you like to talk a little bit about them while I enjoy a couple sips? Yeah, sure. Uh, Cremant Alsace today, I think that um, it's, um, it's really, really a great wine. And um, for me, the Cremant d'Alsace uh, show uh, a great image of our region. We are lucky, as I said, to have a really nice climate. Uh, with a really cold winter and hot summer. And this is really important to keep the acidity into our grapes. And that's why we are able to produce really high quality of Cremant today. Um, and uh, I don't say that Cremant is better than Prosecco or Champagne. For me, it's totally different. I love Champagne. I love a good Prosecco, but Cremant, it's, we can, we can be honest, it's a really good value wine. The Cremant d'Alsace, it's uh, the method traditional. Um, and in our domain, for example, our Cremant, we leave all our Cremant minimum 18 months on lease. And that means that the bubble really, will be really uh, fine. And uh, for me... You also get uh, like a richness uh, and an elevated like, aromatic profile from, from that as well. Exactly. So you can definitely tell. Exactly. And uh, um, I'm lucky to, to have a really nice importer, uh, the sorting table. And uh, with our importer in USA, uh, we work um, mostly with uh, the Cremant Les Natures. And also uh, the second huge success, it's uh, the Cremant uh, Rosé, our pink Cremant. But let's speak about Cremant Les Natures first. Um, yes. On the nose, hein, it's a really fruity Cremant. Uh, why? Because um, actually uh, it's a blend of three grapes. We use to make this Cremant uh, Chardonnay, Pinot Blanc and Pinot Noir. We use mm -hmm. uh, the Chardonnay in Alsace. Hein? It's, uh, it's normally forbidden for still wine. But of course, uh, for the Cremant d'Alsace, uh, we can eat it and it's really interesting. And these three grapes variety bring uh, something interesting. The, the, the Pinot Blanc bring the freshness and the, the fruity mm -hmm. flavor. The Chardonnay will bring the toasty and the body of the wine. And the same for the Pinot Noir. And the Pinot Noir bring a little bit something more round. Uh, but um, the blend of... Did you say Pinot uh, Noir? Interesting. Okay. On the I mean, Noir, it's it's yes, really it's beautiful. It's light, it's lifted. It has just, you know great acidity into it. It's a refreshing quality. You know, as we enter, like, you know, exactly. more warmer months and so forth, this is exactly what I'd like to be sipping on. Um, but, you know, it's also, you know, quite versatile to be enjoyed a lot of different foods. And I definitely want to talk about that in a little bit. But I want to, uh, you know, to definitely commend, you know, and, and be, you know, to how excited I was to open and enjoy these because uh, early in my career, I found the, the amazing values that these wines have to present. Um, as well as, you know, the, the level of quality you get from them. So um, thank you. And by no means does that mean you should raise the prices. We love it where it's at. So, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, this Cremant, the Cremant uh, Les Natures, it's really well balanced. And also it's important to know that the Cremant from Alsace, most of the time it's brut. It's never sweet style. It's really yeah. fresh and crispy. And this is really, really important. But due to, I think, like, the Pinot Blocks characteristic, you really, really do get this, like, you know, it's not sweet, but, like, there is, like, this really fresh, ripe, juicy fruitiness to it, too, that gives it a different dimension. It's not so heavy and not so heady, if you will, that you might get from, mm -hmm. say, like, if it was, like, a Chardonnay-dominant um, uh, sparkling wine. So I think that, you know, I think that's definitely an attribute and a characteristic that I find common in Cremant de Alsace as a whole. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. And then I, I will... Uh, and most importantly, like Stephanie like, said, and so delicious. So. <laughs> so we'll be tasting next the, the rosé. Cremant rosé. So 100% Pinot Noir, which is... 
where you typically find in criminal dollar draws? In Alsace, in Alsace, the Crémant Rosé, it's made only with Pinot Noir, 100% Pinot Noir. Mm -hmm. Don't do any blend and with another I don't know if you variety, know this or... And uh, to add this color, we do in our domain a really long press, minimum 10 hours. I think... Uh, our internet is a little bit wonky. Um, all right, can you hear me, Lord? Is anyone else experiencing a little bit of um, a lag on her screen? On my screen, she has like okay. that dreaded no. spinning circle. So <laughs> there you go. I think, okay. yeah, I think we're back. Yes, I said. Uh, I said that this is a Cremant made with 100% Pinot Noir. And uh, it's, um, it's, we do a really long press to have this uh, color. For us, it's important to have a salmon color, you know, something, uh, uh, something not uh, too dark. Uh, it's really important to, to have something uh, light. And the, um, the bubbles uh, are also really fine. For this Cremant, hein, for the rosé, it's always minimum 18 to 24 months on lease. And um, if you compare to the first one, huh, it's, uh, it's really uh, fruity. On the nose, it's totally different. Uh, we have lots of um, raspberry flavor, strawberry flavor. It's really fruity. To me, it's fruity, but it's also like savory at the same time. You know, I think that, you know, it has like that distinctive kind of like, almost like a, a, like a tea quality. There's a little bit of spice in there too. That really kind of lends it to be able to be uh, um, something that you go a different direction than you did, would have gone with the first one as far as what, what you would enjoy it with, um, but also enjoy who you should serve it to as well. So mm -hmm. I had a quick question, though, if, if you don't mind. I, and I don't know if you know the answer to this, but, you know, um, typically, you know, when we think of sparkling rosé and so forth, um, it's not common that, you know, that the, the rule is that it's 100 percent something, right? So why is it the case that, you know, in Alsace, why is it 100% uh, Pinot Noir? Is there a reason uh, behind why the rosés are 100% uh, Pinot Noir? As opposed to like being a blend of, you know, white and red? Uh, it's, it's, it's a good, good question. It's, um, it was uh, always like this in, uh, in Alsace. It's, uh, we need to do a rosé uh, de saignée, you know, like uh, mm -hmm. by maceration. And that's yeah. why it's always one on Pinot Noir because we cannot add red wine uh, to have the color and that's why we use only uh, Pinot Noir. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Uh, I've got champagne is the only region that allows blending. Got it. Exactly, cool. exactly. Yeah. And um, as you see, hein, as, uh, the, the style of this Cremant, it's also brut. Even if it's rosé, it's not sweeter because I don't know why, but sometimes people think that uh, Cremant Rosé will be sweeter than Cremant, than a white Cremant. But it's not the case here. Huh? Even if it's more fruity on the nose, it's still brut and still really fresh. And that's why this kind of Cremant uh, will be nice, of course, uh, for aperitif. But also um, with, uh, for example, Salmon Sushi, it's great. Or you can uh, you can uh, appreciate this kind of uh, cremant with a uh, uh, different kind of uh, food and not just aperitif. Yeah, certainly. But I was going to mention, make... you know, one of my favorite things to do is, you know, to pair, you know, rosé, sparkling wines. And this one is a, a prime example uh, with, you know, sushi, whether it be, you know, your modern style sushi rolls or whether it be with fresh sashimi and nigiri uh, and going out there. I think this would totally be delicious with, you know, just a beautiful, like, you know, like, you know, tuna that's slightly seared. I think it really kind of accentuate that. But also, you know, going to like, you know, yeah. like I said, you know, it doesn't have to just be in pair teeth or it doesn't have to be something to eat with like, you know, seafood or fresh things. I think this could also go very well into, you know, more richer foods. So, you know, whether it be a beautiful like seared mm -hmm. duck or like a pork loin, uh, I think this can definitely complement those and can showcase to you that you don't have to just enjoy, you know, sparkling wine um, as, you know, uh, as an opening wine or something that you enjoy with appetizers or, or just for a celebration. This is something that you can definitely enjoy uh, throughout your meal. And even with something, you know, like a main course or something very hearty. And uh, that's exactly what I was going for with Beth. I was trying to make everyone thirsty and hungry this conversation. So mission accomplished. 
<laughs> yes, yes, that's true. But uh, yes, no, uh, Cremant d'Alsace is really easy to open with everything. And uh, of course, good friend, uh, it's, it's the best. But uh, um, in Alsace, uh, we open Cremant d'Alsace for all occasions. Even just yes. a week, uh, you know, uh, after a hard day of uh, working, it's so nice to have a glass of bubble. Uh, it's, uh, it's really something crisp and uh, it's, it's the best uh, to begin uh, the meal or even to drink uh, during all the meal, uh, as you said. No, certainly. And then, like, for the first one, you know, we're talking about, you know, things like the pasta pears of that. Like, I always, like, I, I guess I talk about, like, you know, proteins and so forth. But I always forget, like, you know, that you can also think about, like, you know, vegetable-based dishes. These two wines can go absolutely phenomenal with a range of vegetable you know, whether it be like for the first one, you know, I'm totally in my mind, I'm thinking like, you know, when it's asparagus season, so forth, this could be something that can go extremely well with just oh, a yeah. really beautiful preparation of, you know, whether it be green or white asparagus. Um, and then for the rosé, I can see this going with a, just a really beautiful like mushroom risotto or, or something that's really kind of umami driven, you know, uh, eggplant, mushrooms, so on and so forth. And I think that, you know, you definitely um, don't forget, you know, to, to, to cater and think about, you know, our, our vegetarian friends too, because, uh, these wines have the city, have the structure, have the, the bubbles, cleanse your palate, and so forth. So it definitely has the versatility to go, whether it be, whether, whatever your dietary restrictions are. So I think that's the beauty of, you know, of Cremant, of sparkling wines. But uh, after tasting your wines, definitely, they, I think that fits that profile to the T. I'm totally agree with you. Yeah. Um, so we have one more wine that we would like to taste and talk about. And this is a variety that, you know, Alsace is quite um, renowned for and this is your Le Natur Riesling from 2019 vintage yeah it's this one of course we should taste our Riesling because um, uh, as you know uh, Riesling you're talking to the sommelier yeah, of course we're, we're still tasting Riesling it's it's the king of the great of the great variety and uh, personally uh, it's my favorite grape variety and I, I'm a huge uh, fan of Riesling and that's why uh, I'm really happy to be able to taste a Riesling with you. Um, in our domain uh, something really important for us is to produce dry style of Riesling. For me the Riesling it's really a food wine. It's, uh, it's a wine, um, it's an incredible grape variety because I like to say that it's uh, like a sponge, you know, if you, if you plant Riesling on granite soil or limestone soil, the style of the, of the, of the wine will be totally different. And especially because we are in biodynamic and organic uh, viticulture in our domain, uh, we work a lot the soil and we really uh, help the roots to go deeper and deeper in our soil. The aim is to, um, to have this minerality from our terroir in the wine, inside wine. And that's why, uh, yes, we, we work a lot the soil to be able to, to have this salty flavor from uh, the, the, the soil uh, of our village. And this is the reasoning um, Les Nature. Les Nature is the name of the range. Huh? It's not a natural wine, it's organic and biodynamic wine, but Les Nature is the name of the range. And uh, from the vintage 2019, uh, it's, um, it's a great um, bone dry style of Riesling. No residual sugar, totally dry Riesling. Uh, and um, uh, it's only from granite soil, only from uh, different parcels of vines from our uh, village of Amershuir. And that means that it will be on the nose of Riesling with lots of citrus flavor. It's really typical from the grape variety, easy to recognize. Uh, lots of um, grapefruit, um, lime flavor. It's really citrus, you know, lots of um, fresh, um, fresh fruit. A little bit mineral also. Uh, this is because it's from uh, granite. Huh? From the granite soil, we always have this uh, nice uh, uh, minerality from uh, from our uh, terroir. So, so definitely there, you know, but there's also, you know, it showcases the sunshine, shows the, 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 the ripeness, the, the, the breath that, that, out, that you know, Alsatian recent can have. I think yours hits all those on the T. And if you don't mind, would you speak briefly upon, like, you know, what, what would you say, you know, if you were tasting blind or if you were asked, you know, um, 
what defines you know recently from Amersware? Like what, what would what would differentiate from a different part of of Alsace? What um, what would be like difference? Like if, you, if I was to taste like you know um, a, a different Alsatian recently from a different village, what would be the difference? Would you say between I... the recently coming from your village versus coming from another village? Like what can one expect, or yeah. what what would be like the the, the um, differences that you should be looking for? It... Of course, there is the terroir. The terroir will change the style of the resin, mm -hmm. of course. And as I said, uh, this is resin only from granite soil, and that's why it's really citrus and this kind of flavor. But uh, um, after, it's uh, it depends also, uh, you know, the winemaker. It depends uh, how you work in the vineyard. But in our village, the resin most of the time will be um, really, uh, uh, you know, really fresh and. Uh, never uh, too rich you know we have lots of concentration but it's never uh, with um, it's never too rich it's more uh, citrus and uh, lemon flavor uh, kind of reasoning and also the acidity uh, it's a vertical acidity you know it's a reasoning from amershire like this and uh, yeah. in our domain we have lucky to have uh, vines in another, another village uh, on a single vineyard called Letzenberg, for, for example. It's a totally mm -hmm. different kind of soil, more heavy soil. And the style of the reasoning will be also different. It will be more large at the, at the beginning of the mouth. And then, and then the acidity will come like this. But when you taste reasoning from granite, for example, this reasoning, it's really uh, like this, you know, it's a reasoning, uh, a yeah. bone dry style of reasoning. Perfect for seafood or fish, these kind of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I, I, you know, when tasting this, you know, obviously my mind gravitates towards you know different type of fish preparations, uh, but also I can see it going well with you know just a really beautiful like roasted chicken, um, and, and also going well with like mm -hmm. you know uh, you know a little bit of you know recently in pork to me it really is like kind of a natural thing. So for me, this one just needs like something with you know. In the south, you know, I'm in the southern part of the United States. In the south, we enjoy, you know, our pork uh, products uh, with, with uh, a range of, of um, fried uh, okra or uh, uh, greens that have been sautéed and cooked with, say, like, you know, collard greens with, like, a little bit of uh, bacon uh, and, like, a little bit kind of a vinegar-based uh, component. So I think this is the reason that can go extremely well with those because it has the richness to deal well with the pork, but it has, like you said, that focus, that, that acidity to really kind of, like, you know, hold its own and but also uplift the flavors of like the collards and uh, also complement you know that, that uh, the flavors of, of fried okra quite nicely as well which is not a very easy thing to, to kind of complement um yeah and i don't know if you've ever had that but you know <laughs> i love how stephanie said pork is all sauce is national national vegetable so i guess i'm in, in the right mindset here with uh with my thought for a really before pairing um but you know that's what i thought of when i first tasted you know your your uh, your riesling and really um uh, maybe maybe hungry so, <laughs> so yeah <me> but um <laughs> yeah so you know i, I don't want to keep you too late because i know also you know we're getting to that uh you know your aperitif time uh so i want you to be able to enjoy the, the rest of your cremant uh without uh without all these instagram fans and hearts and and uh conversation going on uh but i do appreciate the time for that you took uh to talk with us uh thanks for joining us for our uh virtual lunch um, the generations of kind of experience, love, yeah. and uh, care that you've put into you know, the vineyards and the wines is quite evident from everything I've tasted today. And I hope everyone that's listening and uh, that will be eventually attending the fair uh, gets a chance to enjoy uh, these wines as much as I have, as well as talking to you and your father. Um, I hope to uh, be able to catch up uh, in the near future. Um, everyone, yeah, please I mean, have a uh, Yeah. Uh, but for, you know, I kind of give our closing moments. Is there anything else you would like to say or add to a conversation, Laura? No, actually, I think uh, the best would be that I just want to say that I hope to see you all uh, in Alsace because uh, it's so important for me to keep the contact and uh, I love to welcome people in uh, our cellar and to be able to show the wine. And of course, with uh, thanks to Milesi Malzas, we will be able to taste wine uh, and to see us um, uh, via uh, our computer. But of course, I really hope that uh, I can 
Uh, we will be able to see you all soon. And of course, uh, you are always welcome in, in our region. I mean, you have to be showing us a picture of, of you know, of the, the barrels and so forth and uh, giving us the history of, you know, your family. Uh, how can we not want to visit? Uh, and how the connection, not want to it's, uh, the cellar? it's not I mean, I feel best. like if I was to visit you, you didn't take you... me down to the cellar, I'd be very, very disappointed. You are okay? Yes. Can you hear me? Um, I think we're having a little bit of connection issues, wow. but um, go ahead. I, I know that, you know, Laura has things uh, that she needs to attend to, and we're, okay, there we go. I think, uh, I just, all I said was that, you know, after you guys showed us the picture of the cellar, you know, if I was to come visit, so sort of, I'd be sorely disappointed if you didn't take us down to the cellar and show us these beautiful 100, old, 100 plus year old barrels and uh, really get a chance to really taste touch and experience the history that your family has had in the region. Um, so again, I hope everyone that's here okay. joining us has a really amazing week. Uh, be sure to, to keep on tuning into uh, uh, um, and following Drink Al at Drink Alsace uh, to see who the next Lunch with Alsace will be with. They occur every Monday until the fair, uh, usually around noon. And uh, please continue to, uh, when you're enjoying a glass of wine, consider definitely making sure that's an Alsatian one. And Cheers to you, Laura. Thanks for joining us, um, Sunday. And um, more, last but not least, uh, if you want to learn more about this, please take the time to check out the interactive website that the Milicine Alsace has put together. It's www.milicine.com hyphen or dash Alsace, dot com. Um, and once again, you know, make sure you're also following at Drink Alsace uh, to, if you're active on Instagram like the both of us are, and so that you can keep updated to what's going on, uh, the guest, as well as um, what's going on with the fair as well. Uh, thanks again for joining us. Cheers. And thank you again, Laura. Appreciate your time. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.